then we've got Laura Deeming to talk about goats. Morning, everyone. Um, so I'm Laura. I'm probably a little reluctant to admit that I'm currently working for MPI after the discussions that we had this morning. Um, I do work as a senior advisor for the animal welfare science team, so nothing to do with food safety, uh, just to let you know. So, um, so the work that I'm presenting was from a few years ago, and that's when I was working at Ag Research. So the work was carried out in collaboration with Massey University. The work I am presenting here was part of a much larger study that was um, investigating long-term impacts of hoof trimming in dairy goats. So we collected hoof health and hoof confirmation data across the first two years of life. In conjunction with that, we also uh, collected gait score data at several time points across those two years. So that's the, the data that I am going to show you now. So I just, before we get into the data, I wanted to quickly give a quick intro into dairy goat farming, just very briefly, uh, for those of you that might not be that familiar with the dairy goat industry. So dairy goats in New Zealand and worldwide are, the majority of them are permanently housed. So in New Zealand, they are bed on shavings. In the UK, for instance, they tend to be bed on straw because it's a cheaper option over there. But they are um, permanently housed and typically fed by what's uh, referred to as a cut and carry system, so pastures grown out in fields cut and, and brought, to, uh, brought into the goats and distributed to the goats as is silage or TMR or whatever that farm, farm choose to, chooses to be feeding. And I just quickly wanted to mention about the housing systems because it is quite an important risk factor for hoof health in dairy goats and that is something that I will touch on a bit later as, as I go on through the presentation. So then we get into lameness. So what is lameness? Well, we know lameness is a painful, con a painful condition. We know it's a behavioral indicator of pain. It results in the animal altering um, its weight on the affected limb, so it results in this um, an, altered, an altered gait. In its mild form, you can get just uh, an, an uneven gait. The animal might just be short on one of its strides, potentially, which to an untrained eye, you may not really detect. Um, in its more severe forms, you're going to end up with an animal. Unfortunately, like this girl, the girl in this photo, that she was unwilling um, and unable to bear any weight on that leg. And then what do we know about lameness and dairy goats? Well, actually, um, the answer is not a lot. Um, there is some limited work from overseas that has done, done some research into, uh, into lameness and risk factors, and I'll talk about that shortly. Um, but there is little to no um, work in New Zealand, and to my knowledge, no, no peer-reviewed published work looking specifically looking into lameness in, in dairy goats. And when we compare that to what we know about lameness in dairy cows, it really highlights how little we actually know about in, 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 dairy, uh, in dairy goats. So this, this um, diagram is highlighting all the risk factors we know of, or most some of the risk factors we know of in dairy cattle that cause lameness. And when we think about risk factors for lameness, they can often be broken down into um, environmental risk factors in the yellow, or into anim animal related risk, fa risk factors on the blue. Um, but what is important to note with lameness is it's usually, as you can see from this diagram, this complex multifactorial interactions that result in an animal going lame. It's not usually, you can never usually pinpoint the cause to one thing. It's usually this whole host of, um, of factors that actually then result, excuse me, result in an animal going lame. The little bit of work that has been done overseas has focused on, on risk factors such as uh, hoof conformation and hoof overgrowth, and that links into those first slides I showed earlier that um, we're showing how, how dairy goats are kept on in um, permanently housed and shaved, shaved shavings bedded barns. So hoof overgrowth is a huge issue because they don't have um, substrates to naturally wear their hooves. So hoof overgrowth results in poor confirmation, which then 
resorts in lateness. Um, so hoof trimming is a huge priority or should be a huge priority in dairy goats. But that's where most of the work so far has, has focused with, with dairy goats. And the aim of this study, the fact we were investigating patterns of lameness across the first two years of life, it allowed, it allowed us to consider uh, risk factors such as parity and stage of lactation. Uh, we know in dairy cattle that um, the calving period is a high risk period for lameness in dairy cattle. Quite often, following, following calving, dairy cattle can, can and do become lame. And the suggestions or the evidence that for the reasons why that is, is due to metabolic and hormonal changes um, around calving, which then result in weakening of the sus suspensory apparatus in the hoof, which then, then can cause, uh, result in uh, increasing uh, soul losses and then potential, potentially lameness. So there's a bit of evidence in dairy cattle, not so much in dairy goats. There's one paper in dairy goats and one very brief paper in dairy goats that's been published looking at um, a risk, the risk factor of kidding and whether that increases lameness. The authors of that study did report higher levels of lameness in lactating goats compared to young stock. Um, unfortunately, they gate scored the lactating goats on hard concrete surfaces as they were leaving the milking parlour. The young stock, they gate scored in the pens on, on straw. And you can't really compare the two. Um, if you're walking animals on soft bedding, it's going to mask symptoms, um, it's going to mask lameness, and therefore you're potentially going to underestimate lameness. So um, unfortunately, uh, yeah, the difference they found might not have actually been a difference. It's because they were underestimating lameness in the young stock, potentially. So that takes me on to what we actually did in this study. So this was on um, just on one farm, uh, a, a goat farm up, here, up near Hamilton. So we enrolled 80 female goats. They're all approximately five months, five months of age. And we gate scored them at five, five, nine, 13, 17, 21, and 25 months of age. They were walked down a concrete raceway, leaving the milking parlor back towards their pens. Uh, and we video recorded them, we video recorded them walking, which then meant we could go back to um, ag research and two of us, so two trained observers separately, watch the videos and we could allocate gate, gate scores. And um, that also allowed us to make sure we were, li were reliably um, assigning gate scores as well, the fact there was two separate, separate scores being, being allocated. The gate scoring system we used was a five point gate score that we developed and published um, Prior to, the, prior to this work, so the gate score um, one being not lame and then going up to five being um, severely lame. So it's quite similar to the gate scoring system used in dairy cattle. And then we get to the results. So we di I did mention we gate scored at five months of age. Unfortunately, we had to exclude that data from the analysis. Um, dairy goats that young don't really like to walk. They like to hop and skip and jump and trot. Uh, <laughs> so trying to score accurate, give, uh, yeah, assign accurate gate scores was pretty impossible. Um, and unfortunately, we, we decided to exclude that data and, and just focus on nine, month, nine months onwards. Um, interestingly, and I will discuss the reasons why I think this is later, but interestingly, we didn't see a, a high number uh, or many of the high levels of, of lameness. So we didn't see too many um, severely lame or highly lame, lame goats. Um, we, for the analysis, we ended up collapsing it into a binary score. So we had um, uh, a score of one, so not, not lame, and then compared that to um, an impaired gait. So anything scored two and above. So it's a bi binary um, comparison and using using the nine-month assessment period as a reference category. So all other assessments then were compared back to the nine-month category to see if there was a difference in risk between, between, lame, between lameness. And what we found was the highest, the highest incidence of an impaired gait, so that's a score of two or above, was at the 13-month assessment. So that was 37% of the goats were found to have an impaired gait. And at the 25 month assessment, so 48% of the goats there were, were found to have an impaired gait. 
which um, equated to the odds of a goat having an impaired gait at the 13 months assessment were greater by a factor of 2.15 compared to the nine months and greater by a factor of 3.79 at the 25 month assessment. So as you can see, uh, 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 much more increased odds of being lame at those assessment periods. So I can hear you asking what, what's going on at those assessment periods, what's so special about those assessment periods uh, to potentially be causing that lameness or the impaired gait, I should say. And the answer being is they had just kidded. So 13, 13 months is the time where dairy goats will first kid and then the 25 months a year later they will have, have their second kid. So our results are suggesting that there is a potentially a parturition effect um, it also in, in dairy goats. And as I've mentioned, in dairy cattle, there's potential hormonal and metabolic changes happening to, for them to be able to them, for them to give birth. That could be happening also happening in dairy goats. There's also um, potential the fact that the dairy goat will have lost body condition score. They will have lost um, thickness in their digital hoof pad, which can also potentially increase lameness. Uh, another uh, potential risk factor is the fact the goats will, they were dry, obviously, before, before kidding, so they will have been permanently in, the, in their barns prior to kidding. They would have very little contact with concrete, and now all of a sudden they've kidded and they're now being milked twice a day and having to move to and from the milking parlour twice a day. So there's a much greater exposure to concrete, which also could have, uh, could have caused uh, yeah, this increased risk of lameness at that time. So just to, just to finish off and some, some conclusions. So the transition period and, and parturition may increase the risk of lameness in, uh, in dairy goats. However, we do caution, as I mentioned, there were low levels of lameness actually seen overall on this farm, and we were only on one farm. And the reason we think, the potential reason for this is the fact that the, those goats were actually involved in a, in a hoof trimming trial, which was the biggest trial that they were involved in. So they were being trimmed every four months of age, and they were being trimmed from five months of age onwards, which is, is, not, is much more frequent and a lot younger than your typical hoof tra trimming regime on, a, on a, a dairy goat farm. So inadvertently, we may have actually altered the lameness we saw and reduced the, la the lameness that was, was being seen. We did also obviously only follow them for two years. If we'd followed them for longer, we know in dairy cattle, yeah, the older they get, the potential risk of lameness increases. So if we'd followed them for longer, we may well have seen, seen increases in lameness. And also a caution that we didn't, didn't investigate the exact cause of lameness. So yet yeah, we identified that they'd got an impaired gait and they weren't, they weren't walking properly, but we, don't, we didn't actually investigate the exact cause for that. So was it um, a sole ulcer? Was it a white line disease? We, we don't know. Um, it's certainly an area that, that would uh, be great to do further work in. But although a limited, a limited study in terms of numbers and being on one farm, it does certainly suggest there is a pattern that warrants further, further investigation. And it suggests that there's a potential for management interventions around that risk period and um, may be important to help minimise minimize that risk of increased um, lameness and an increased risk of an, of an impaired gait. So that is me, thank you. Um, just to thank the, fun, the funding from, um, MB, from an MB bid and also from the Dairy Goat Cooperative and then my co-authors were from Massey University and uh, yeah, Massey University in Ag Research. Thank you very much.